I recently picked up this camera, the Shika FX3, and I picked it mainly for the lens. And the story behind the lens is pretty cool. So in the late 1970s, this camera was produced in 1979, Yashica was producing lenses for Zeiss. And there was a rumor that the lens quality coming out of Yashica was that of Zeiss. And it makes sense since they were coming out of the same factory. But it's kind of really hard to judge, and it's kind of really hard to determine that. But I kind of picked it up because it sounded like a really good story. And I kind of it was pretty cheap. These lenses are $25. So for that price, if it comes even close to the Zeiss lenses, you're in good shape. So getting back to the camera, produced in 1979, it uses two LR44 batteries, which are pretty affordable and can still be found. At the top of the camera, you're going to see the lens release right here, and then the self-timer. Self-timer is pretty simple to use, just pull down and advance the shutter. Then after a short period, it's going to move up and take your picture. It's a pretty well-built camera, totally, total metal chassis. Um, I heard it's really durable and has really long life, and I think that's pretty cool. On the bottom of the camera, you're going to see a film rewind release, and then the battery door. Again, it uses two LR44 batteries, very affordable, and you can still find them. Top of the camera, pretty basic. You're going to see the shutter speed dial. You're going to see the shutter advance and the shutter button right there. To advance the shutter, simply pull to the right. And then just advance the shutter like that. Change ASA speed, and you're going to pull up on the shutter speed dial. And simply turn it left or right. So how do you load the film in this camera? You're going to pull up on the back, pull up on the film rerun release, it's going to release the back. And then you're just going to put your film in upside down and pull it to the right and to the spools. So one cool thing about this camera is that it's fully manual, so you don't need to use a battery with it. And that's a pretty cool feature. For a camera in 1979, a lot of people were moving to electronic shutters, and this is still had a fully manual um, shutter, which I really prefer and I think is really important for um, beginning photographers because the meters and stuff go bad really quickly, and you really can't um, rely on them way too much because they're just such old cameras. So once you've loaded the film and then you've advanced it once or twice and you're done shooting, simply turn it. Um, when you're done shooting, you're going to turn it upside down, hit the film rewind release, turn it back side up again, and then rotate the film rewind knob clockwise. You're going to hear it and feel it when it's done, so it's pretty easy to know. Then you're simply going to pull up on the back, and that's it. So this is a pretty good camera. I got it for $24, and I think that it's a good camera because it's fully manual, and it has that, you know, the, the lenses, and if it can get anywhere close to the ice, it's going to be a good deal. So like and like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these type of um, video manuals. Thanks.